Hello, and welcome to the Read to Know podcast, where the goal is to actually remember what you read so then you can better apply it to your life. On this podcast, we go through a book one chapter at a time, and then we actually practice remembering what we've read. So if you want to follow along, we're currently working our way through Bob Goff's book, Dream Big. I'm Zach Brown, and my friend Chris Yarber is joining me to help discuss and break down this book. Also, if you're on Apple Podcasts, it would be huge if you left a rating and review for us. It would help out a ton. If you're not on Apple Podcasts, no worries. Just send this to a friend who might be interested. Anyway, thanks again for listening, and enjoy the conversation. Chris. I have my Pamplemousse LaCroix, and I'm ready to go for day two of Bob Goff's Dream Big. We are on chapter two, Thermometer. Thermometer. And why he names it Thermometer is a hilarious story um, that I, I don't know. I don't know if I would be better telling it or reading it when we open up the book, but pretty yeah. much he sticks a butt thermometer in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> is pretty much the synopsis of where that's going. That's not the yes. point of that. It's, anyway. Yeah, so if you haven't read the chapter, Chris just ruined it for I'm you. I'm sorry. Ruined the surprise. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said the other day, uh, read along, uh, read these stories and stuff because we won't break down all of his personal right. stories because he can tell it better than we can. Yeah, but you got to throw that one in there. Yeah. I mean, when you do something that, yeah, bizarre, you know. Anyway. Yeah. Bob yeah. Goff, man, he's got the stories. He does. He's got the stories. Um, yeah, that's why it's called thermometer. <laughs> he puts, anyway, yeah, and the reason why he says that is because this second chapter, the first one was about relationships. Mm-hmm. The second one is about failure. And so he's yep. cert- when he's talking about chasing your ambitions, he's certainly not uh, talking about this in an order in which I would have expected. I kind of expected knowing what this book was about going into it that he would eventually talk about failure and mistakes i i don't think that you can write a book like this and not talk about failures and mistakes i'm just surprised that it's as early as it is right Uh, but he just uses that as an illustration he's certainly not a uh uh, he's certainly not afraid to embarrass himself that's that's for sure yeah that's funny because before we even talk about hey what is your ambition what are you going to do about it and why is it important and all this stuff and the steps on how to uh move towards that he first talks about relationships and then he talks about about failures yes that's basically how he starts out this book which is just again very interesting because i think it's in these basically are important things to grasp yeah before you embark out on on um on anything yeah well and maybe he would say that these are because he starts with these first two maybe he of course i'm sure he had he had a plan, a plan when writing just just didn't throw this together but i'm yeah. sure that he he thought to himself okay what are, what are the two most important things that i want to communicate uh, number one being that you are going to, or number two, but knowing that you are going to make mistakes, you are going to mess up. Not that that yep. should stop you. Certainly not. That's not his message at all, but you are going to mess up. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So some key uh, takeaways from this chapter right yeah. here. Um, I like that, you know, he's it's basically just like get used to that. If you're chasing something that's worthwhile, um, there are going to be difficult things that pop up. There are going to be things that knock you off track. You're going to uh, fail. Mm-hmm. And um, but we shouldn't be worried about that. But we should just be expecting that so that we can be ready for it when it happens. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Expect it, you know. Uh, know that it's coming. Um, you sometimes you're in control of that. Sometimes you're not. You know, some failures I think we are in control of. Some we we see coming a little bit further down the road than than others. Right. Sometimes I also believe we can arrive at a destination and ask ourselves, okay, how did how did we get here? Um, and it's after really some. Uh, some mistakes, some failed choices in a mm-hmm. sense, you know, we get there. Um, but yeah, that's, I'm glad you said that. That's right. a good way of putting it. And yeah, he mentions that, that some mistakes are uh, maybe premeditated yes. and even like self-harm for whatever reason. Um, you know, whether I think that's like, you know, insecurities maybe you have that you don't think you can do it anyway, or, um, you know, or what, or you just, you know, um, you do something even though you shouldn't be. Um, but then some are just accidents that happen along the way. And that's part of life. You know, you just, sometimes you just mess up and you're not, and you weren't, you weren't trying to, and then that's just what, that's where you end up. That's what happens. Um, but yeah, very interesting, uh, chapter, um, 
Should we go ahead and uh, yeah, let's pull go out ahead the book and here and dive books. into some quotes? Yes. Um, yes. So, I find it I find it funny opening this up here. He he says um, in like the first paragraph he talks about he asks the question, "What was your earliest ambition?" Yeah. And and I was trying to think, and I don't know if I had a I don't know if I had one that was that at least right now in my mind that pops up that's like yes that was that was it i had things i wanted to do but i think for me personally it's been interesting one of the things that has happened i think as i've transitioned from you know a kid uh, to an adult is that i've gone from um being less uh kind of apathetic in a way to where like i never had when i was a kid i never had like a dream job or anything i, I was not like i when i grow up i want to be a doctor or a police officer or a fireman you know i never had like a dream like that and so as i've as i've gotten older um that's one of the things that i've been kind of intentionally trying to pull out of myself is like what is it that i do want to do what is what is that you know not necessarily a dream job but what is it that i want to have accomplished what to have done in my you know time here on this earth mm-hmm. and um yeah i don't know if i could i don't know if i could pinpoint to one one example of what was my first earliest ambition yeah i read do you that. have anything for that yeah i i do i read i read that question and um, you kind of know this already, but when I first started in college, I was a music major, not a theology major. And theology is something that I never thought that I would go into. However, um, I did have this ambition to be a musician and to <laughs> to be um, a euphonium player, which euphonium is like a small tuba. No one ever knows what euphonium is, so you feel like you have to explain it every single time. Um, so props to you all who are listening and know what a euphonium is. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, but that's, that's why I so love that he put in this chapter that this is the way ambitions work, is sometimes they simply don't. <laughs> and I think that I think that takes so much weight off of that can take so much weight off of you, right? Yeah. Because for so long, uh, I I asked myself and, and told myself, you know, am I a failure or I am a failure? You know, did I make a mistake of of switching majors? And in other words, choosing a new you know career path, choosing a new path that I was going to walk down for uh, the rest of my ni- my life, not just strictly that. I mean, you have other things that you you know venture into. you you have other ambitions and goals other than, as you mentioned, other than just what's your dream job, so to speak. But I think that can that that sentence itself can take so much weight off of you is that's just the way ambitions work. Sometimes they just don't. And that was one that just didn't. But it doesn't mean, um, it, that doesn't always mean that you necessarily failed, but sometimes failures do happen. Um, in a sense, in a sense, I did fail uh, because I was not doing well class-wise with like music theory and stuff like that. And literally, in those cases, I was failing literally in those areas. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but so failure does happen. But I think that just takes a lot of weight off of you. Is that sometimes it simply doesn't. It doesn't mean you shouldn't chase. It doesn't mean you shouldn't strive. But it does. It does happen. Yeah, yeah. And I like what you're talking about there is that kind of pivot almost, you know, maybe like, hey, I need to I need to switch directions a little bit and need to switch things up. But I like when, you know, there are times where you do that, but then some of that stuff, um, like say music knowledge or things like that, end up playing a role later down the line in a different way, a way that you did not originally intend. Right. Um, which is kind of fun and that basically, you know, even things that, you know, maybe you didn't, you know, that things that didn't work out still can play a part in being beneficial later down the line. Right. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought this this chapter really, really spoke to me personally, not only starting with that question and then that quote right there, but then also, um, as you were just talking, I, I was thinking about when when people would ask me about why did why am I changing ambitions here kind of going a different direction with my with my dream because you know when when you have when you have a, a dream in a sense you know you tend to talk about it a lot so I was talking music 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 to people um, and and then what I doing then what I did when I made that pivot when I made that switch um, I would I would tell lies to people I really did I would tell lies to people about why I switched and stuff like that because I felt like they wouldn't understand um, but and he and he addresses that mm-hmm. by saying that some of us start telling lies about ourselves or others, and you mentioned this kind of in the first half as well, uh, that we do this for a number of reasons, but primarily we do this because we're uncertain about who we are, 
and yeah. we're insecure. Mm-hmm. Is what he writes, and that's that's exactly where I was coming from when I would tell when I would tell lies, especially about the, this pivot going from one dream to another. Um, you know, I was in the midst of that, making mistakes, insecure, and right. so I told lies and stuff like right. that. So, and and really, that's like a, you know, it's not because you necessarily I think wanted to, but it's like you're just not like he says you're not sure who you are in a sense that like you're not sure. Uh, the the reason that you feel a certain way but you're not sure why the what the the deep root of that feeling is like right. immediately and he talks about that in more in uh, i think maybe the next chapter mm-hmm. is about getting closer to the root of um you know who you are and why you are doing what you're doing on the surface but then figuring out why that is the case underneath below the surface right um but that's getting ahead into i think <laughs> yeah. the next chapter um i wanted to point out this other quote here he says uh we smoke or cuss or dress or act like someone we uh, really aren't to gain acceptance from people we really don't know we're all going to make mistakes some are premeditated and weirdly intended to be self-destructive others just arise simply because we don't understand what is happening around us those mistakes uh, that remind us um, those are the mistakes that remind us of our humanity and help us to be truthful with ourselves about the fact that we really don't have it all figured out yeah and basically that's exactly what you were saying you know we just don't everyone looks like they have it all together no one does no you know not even not even Bob Goff has it all together right 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 <laughs> you know right. what I mean right we're we're all figuring it out and uh, no matter if you're you know 17 or 70 um, you know there's still things that um, everyone's trying to figure out. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is just not, you know, what you just spoke of is not just a, a teenage problem. You yeah. know, we would think that this is maybe just it doesn't a teenage end in your, problem. It doesn't end after your teens. <laughs> no, it does not. No, it doesn't end after your teens. It doesn't end after college. You're always looking to someone else and saying, I wish that I could be them or be different like mm-hmm. them or, or chase after those things. But I love that he uh, ends, not that we have to end, but I, I love how he ends this specific chapter with a really encouraging note kind of bring uh, brings God into the picture he said um, he said I couldn't even take my own temperature which is drawing back to the illustration where he put a child's thermometer in his in his mouth um, the kind of thermometer that they used to stick under the butt because that gets the most accurate reading you know anyway so he said I couldn't even take my own temperature I couldn't even use in other words I couldn't even use the correct thermostat um, but he says God still finds a way to use me, right? Um, and He He'll use you too. He says we get a fresh start. Um, he says, are we going to get it wrong from time to time? Yes. But that's that's the amazing thing is that God uh, is if infinitely patient. He says with us. Um, sometimes our mistakes are small. Sometimes they're big. But either way, God still uses us. Uh, we're not we're not beyond reach. Uh, we're not we're not beyond hope. Uh, just because we make some mistakes doesn't mean that we can't continue to carry out our ambitions and our dreams. So he really is speaking through this chapter. He, I don't want you to stop at your last mistake. Keep right, pushing. Right, right, exactly, yeah. And it's, you know, kind of like uh, I've heard someone say, um, stop looking back, it's messing with your neck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's like, good. And, uh, you know, and that's the thing we do. And and like you said here, God is... Uh, um, doesn't need for us to have it all together and right. he's not expecting for us to have it all together um and that um you know we can still work out of that and and not we don't need to have everything together to take the next step forward that's right and i think that's the big takeaway from this and he says he ends the um uh, p- uh chapter with we've all suffered setbacks maybe you've tried to go after some audacious dreams that got derailed along the way maybe a few others sunk at the dock um, what do you do when this happens? This book isn't full of um, airtight answers, but it'll ask a few questions and offer a pathway to reframe your thinking. In the meantime, don't feel bad about not being perfect before you start. Mm-hmm. So start now before you know it's perfect. That's right. Exactly. And that's what happened. Uh, that's what happened with this podcast. Uh, you know, I, I had no idea what we were going to do. I just like, I had this idea mm-hmm. and, uh, and we just kind of started not knowing what we're doing and we figured it out uh, as we're going, still figuring it out. Yeah, we don't have it all out. together. No, no, you think, <laughs> you think it's about one thing and, and maybe our dreams can work in the same way. We think it's about one thing, one purpose, one, one, one goal. Um, but it ends up shifting and changing. Um, and God ends up, ends up using it like he says at the end of this chapter. So it's really become right. a beautiful thing. And I, I love these daily 
episodes so far with day one and day yeah. two. I love these daily episodes yeah. so far. So. I do. I this I think this format of kind of short and sweet, uh, quick to the point, and um, but then daily. I think yeah. it'll be. It's uh, it's been fun so far, and I'm looking forward to uh, continuing uh, this. And this chapter, um, it's uh, it's one of those that are. Um, um, sometimes, you know, a little tough to read, but it's, uh, you know, ended on a uh, positive note. Yes, but Bob Goff's always a positive person. He's yes, not going to, he he's not going to stay too negative for too no, long. No, no, no. He will not end with <laughs> condemnation. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that does it with chapter two. Um, tomorrow we're going to go over chapter three, get under the ice cap. So, uh, with that being said, uh, thanks for listening guys and we'll see you tomorrow.